Hi, welcome to SignalPath. Today I'm going to introduce you to a whole new series of SignalPath videos which are going to be called the SignalPath Short Videos. That's because there's a lot of stuff that happens here around the lab. I may be fixing a little thing here and there and normally I don't record that because generally the SignalPath episodes are quite long and they may be you know, more than an hour long typically for the reviews or, or long repairs. But instead these SignalPath Short episodes are going to let you know that these are going to be maybe 10-15 minute repair here and there or introduction of a component or something which might be of interest to more people and it's easier to watch because it's going to be much shorter. So today is going to be the very first one and we're going to take a look at this. So what are we doing exactly? Well today we're going to be repairing the backlight on the LCD screen of the Enritsu 37347A network analyzer. And that's the network analyzer that I repaired in one of the previous videos. And if you remember, there was an issue with the backlight because the CTFL tube was so dim you couldn't see anything. So we went ahead and bought some LED replacement. Another question is, how do we proceed? Well, I was hoping to start with this. So with a little bit of work, we can remove this piece over here and that reveals the CCFL tube that's in there and if you pay close attention you can clearly see that we have this discoloration at the two ends of the tube and that's a classic sign of these tubes beginning to fail and obviously they need to be replaced and the purpose of this reflective sheet is to reflect light back onto the edge of the screen because this tube naturally emits light 360 degrees all around it so any light that hits this surface would be lost if it's not reflected back onto the edge of this distribution a light panel that you see at the back here this piece of plastic you've seen me take LCD screens apart before and this absorbs light from this side goes out and then gets reflected back onto the surface of the LCD hopefully reasonably uniformly and that's what uh, creates a nice backlight so the goal is to remove this and replace it with the LED uh, version of it. Hopefully we can retrofit and fit it in there and see if we can get a good nice backlight. Here we go. Took the tube out and you can clearly see the black regions at the end which is generally caused by the sputtering of the electrodes from high energy impact of the electrons from the tube when it's running and this happens as they age of course and once this uh, begins to happen then you, you limit the amount of electrons that can flow and it can cause all kind of problems the voltage across the tube cannot ca carry as much current anymore and you get this uh, dimming effect and uh, at least that's generally what happens uh, there are other modes of failures of, of tubes as well but this is a, a very common one so now that we see this we can go ahead and take a look at what that LED replacement actually looks like. And here's a look at the LED strip which is supposed to be the CCFL replacement and as you can see this is much much longer than the width of the LCD that I actually need. So here's the original tube for example, you can see it's much much shorter. So we're going to have to cut this to length in order to fit in the LCD screen. Before you can cut it you need to make sure you know how they're wired because otherwise if you cut it somewhere arbitrarily then what's going to happen is that some of the LEDs may not be uh, lit up anymore because they could be in series and you've cut the end of it off. Now although it's not visible on camera, if you look closely you can see there is a wire running at the bottom and a wire running at the top on the PCB which is running across the whole length of this um, PCB strip over here and if you look further you can see that these LEDs are actually in groups of three in series. So one, two, three, these are in series, one, two, three, these are in series and all of them are in parallel afterwards. So groups of three LEDs all in parallel throughout the length of their strip and that means that if you're going to cut it make sure you have multiples of three left otherwise some of them are not going to be lit up anymore so I've done that I've already cut it short but there's a couple of other things to note here and since this is a generic LED strip and you don't know where it's going to be connected this is going to need a constant current driver for uniformity of brightness across all the different applications and also if you want to dim it you want to make sure you have a nice uh, current control mechanism. Now this came with this little LED driver and we're going to take a quick look at that and it actually is capable of driving two of these simultaneously and we're going to turn it on with at least one of them so you can see how much current it consumes and if you look at it closely here this is going to be nothing more than a buck converter plus a constant current driver and as a result this can operate with a wide range of input voltages and if I flip it to the other side you can see that indeed it operates from 10 volts all the way to 30 volts and it will give you the constant uh, brightness of these which are actually really really bright once I turn them on. This LCD is a single side uh, LCD a driver, so this PCB I mean, and uh, it's interesting because there's no metal at the back of this, so these anything that's through hole they have manually soldered on the other side, and not a very good soldering joint there, but it will do the job, I'm sure. 
So we have to replace this with the original CCF driver that was um, in the instrument itself. And that is exactly what I intend to do. But before we can do that, we need to find out uh, whether the voltages that we need to run this are present coming from the network analyzer. Now, this obviously has, as I said, a large voltage range operation. So that's not a problem to be able to get that going. And in terms of pinout, at the back, you can see that it has, it requires an input voltage, pretty easy to give, and there's an enable pin which if you pull high enables the output, and there's a dim which if you pull all the way low it will be at maximum brightness, and then the ground. So really easy interface to connect these up, and I'm sure you can find those voltages in any instrument that you want to go ahead and replace. And I've gone ahead, and right over here, you can see that I have as glued down in place the shortened version of that LED strip, and it's nicely in there, and it's, I try to make it as nice and straight facing towards the a panel itself to get a nice distribution but these LEDs are quite far apart and they're actually very large in modern LCD drivers you have many many much much smaller LEDs to get a much uniform light so this is surely going to give us some light bleeding you're going to be able to see the LEDs but it's better than not having it I, I hope because otherwise you can't see anything and here's the leftover of the strip so I'm going to save that for some other application so this is already quite useful and this is the CCFL driver that was already inside the instrument and this has a very standard um, straightforward structure as well actually let me zoom in a little bit so we can look at them side by side and you can see that the form factors are obviously intentionally kept as similar here's the interface of the voltage is coming in there is no label so I have to do a little bit of an reverse engineering and here's the high voltage and driver here's the capacitor dropper at the output of the transformer which is in series with the CCFL tube and you can see the cutout over there to protect against sparks jumping over to give it some more isolation. So it's really uh, quite straightforward. What is interesting also is that there is a thermal fuse that's glued to the body of the transformer in order to detect if this thing has heated up due to maybe a tube failure or a short or some I know high temperature scenario in order to cut everything out. So that's at least what I think this is. So really nice and pretty straightforward. Nothing special made in Japan because it's an Anrutsu instrument. So let's go ahead, uh, power this guy on just so we can get an idea of how bright it is. And then I'm very eager uh, to do some measurements on the actual network analyzer itself to find out what these voltages are so we can tap onto a good 12 volt voltage and give it to the LCD screen. And here we go, I've hooked it up to my Kithi power supply there, set it to 12 volts, which is you know a nice voltage, most likely be able to find that inside the network analyzer. And let's go ahead and turn this on. And, oh wow, that is ridiculously bright. I mean, you can't see anything once this thing is uh, is running. And it's, it's a very cold color, unfortunately, but wow, this is very, very bright. So you can see from here that this is using 1.1 amp of current at full brightness, and the LCD uh, length of the LED strip that I'm using in the LCD is about half of that. So we're looking at about 500 milliamp, although, I have to say this thing gets really really hot so I'm not entirely happy running it at its full full brightness so maybe we can uh, preemptively think about uh, reducing the dim voltage so that it doesn't run at its highest brightness but first let's go ahead and see what voltages are actually available directly inside the network analyzer Alright, and here's the final result. I apologize for the camera being in my hand and all. Uh, so here's a DC-DC converter for the LED strip. I just mounted it to where the old one was and the wire is going on to the LED strip which is now inside the LCD screen and the LCD screen is mounted back in the unit. And we have the connections that directly go to the old connector 12 volts from the old uh, um, inverter that was there and I added a potentiometer here to be so we can adjust the brightness of the backlight just so that we can adjust it in case it's too bright or in case it has uh, too much power consumption so now that everything is back together we can go ahead and power it on and check out the final result I think it turned out really uh, really nicely actually not even at its full brightness I turned the brightness down just a little bit so that I don't burn so much current into those LEDs but it looks really nice and crisp and uh, it doesn't even um, look very good on the camera but in person it looks quite good so this now brings this unit fully back into operation everything is uh, fixed and repaired and serviced and now it's a good network analyzer. It's just absolutely huge But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video again This is the first episode of the Sigma Pass short series So please let me know in the comment section if this is something that you want me to continue to do And uh, I will make more of these short short little videos in between the longer videos in the future. All right until next time